what was some of our motivations for uh, providing this grant to the Cannon River Watershed Partnership. And I think really, um, as Beth mentioned, I, our interest was in trying to explore possibly in getting some information and feedback about some of the different ways in which watershed plans uh, would come together um, as we were going uh, further to develop our uh, 81 watershed monitoring and assessment approach and then the development, incorporating that data and information into local uh, watershed restoration and protection plans and strategies. So it was really uh, to try to get other partners uh, involved in trying to help us design what is, what, what is going to be a, an effective um, document to, to, to guide uh, natural resource protection uh, moving forward into the future. And I'm, I'm really excited to uh, hear what you have to say, Beth. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and I just want to also take a second to introduce my coworker, Aaron Wills, is here. He was a, a significant part of this process. So he's going to uh, try to help back me up on some of the questions and hopefully remind me if I forget anything important here. Okay. Um, so let's see if we can get this to move forward. Hmm. Oh, there we go. Okay. Hang on, gang. There we go. Okay, so I wanted to just start with a little geography of the Cannon River watershed um, for those of you that aren't nearby. And I apologize, I, was, I meant to get a map of the whole state up here, but it just didn't happen this morning. Um, but this is the Cannon River watershed, and hopefully you're all seeing the map here. Um, our office is in Northfield, Minnesota, which I'm kind of circling with the cursor right now here. Um, the Twin Cities metropolitan area is about um, 30 miles or so uh, north of us, a little more than that. The watershed itself is about 941,000 acres in size and makes up parts of six counties. And the, the Cannon River itself starts over here in what's called Shields Lake, and it uh, flows through a series of lakes over in the western portion of the watershed, works its way around to the city of Faribault. And then our largest tributary, the Strait River, starts down here in the southeast corner and it flows north through Owatonna and up to Faribault where it joins the Cannon River. Um, and then it flows again north to northeast through Northfield to the Billsby Reservoir, which is an important water body for our watershed here. And then it continues east to Red Wing where it joins the Mississippi River and then of course flows south. Um, the Cannon River is one of six wild and scenic rivers in the state of Minnesota uh, from Faribault on over to Red Wing. So that just gives you a little bit of context. Um, Major cities in the watershed would be Red Wing, Northfield, Faribault, Owatonna, um, Waseca. So that's a little bit of the geography of what's going on there. So as, as Rebecca said, when we um, started this project, we didn't really have, um, it, it was meant to be an experiment. And we were really trying to figure out a way that we could have a strategy that would guide and coordinate the various entities that work in the watershed. Um, Cannon River Watershed Partnership is a nonprofit, not a watershed district um, or a watershed management organization. We don't have any regulatory authority or um, basically coordinating authority. Um, we also aren't able to tax or, or anything like that. So the, all the work we as an organization do is, is grant funded, donation supported. We certainly work with the soil and water conservation districts, um, cities, counties, and such and have somewhat of a coordinating role, but there's no official um, designation for us to do that. So it's just a little background that will be important later. Um, we really wanted to look at some strategies both for protection and restoration, and, and this is focusing on surface waters, not groundwater and so much at this point. Uh, and then looking to, to figure out a process that might be useful for others uh, moving forward, and I think that's probably your interest today. So. I'm going to just talk a little bit about the process of what we did. Um, there, there was some work that had already been done in the Cannon River watershed. Um, in Minnesota, we have local water plans, so each county has a, has a local plan. Uh, some of our lakes had been studied in the past. We've had a few uh, TMDL studies that have been done. So we weren't starting from scratch by any means, um, but we do still have a fair amount of um, kind of patchy data in my mind. There's a, there's assessment data, varieties of locations, but we certainly don't have 
um, the same amount of data points for every site all across the watershed. So it is a little bit sporadic, um, or, or at least was prior to, to doing this study. So we took a good look at those existing plans and other studies going back quite a ways, which was actually pretty interesting to see. Um, it came up with some list of asset tables, and we'll talk about that a little more later. We met with staff um, at the Soil and Water Conservation Districts, county water planners, to get input from them. And one of the things that was um, a finding is that while we thought initially they would be very interested in some sort of a coordinated plan, um, there was less enthusiasm than I think we were hoping for. And a lot of that, we felt, stemmed from the fact that the local water plans are still what drives their, um, their sources of their, their block grants and some of the other funding and just the, the statutory requirements to have those plans. Um, there is no requirement to have the, this type of plan that we have. And so that, um, that was definitely a lesson, and we can talk about, more about that later, too. Uh, we looked at as much of the existing, a lot of the existing data on the lakes and stream sites and tried to come up with some summary tables. Uh, the Metropolitan Council in Minnesota has a good example of a table uh, where they graded some of the lakes and streams. And so we, we did some of that. Um, and the, the format of the document, it took us probably three or four different uh, trade with as our original outline, probably isn't anything near with what we ended up at. But anyhow, that was part of the process. Um, oops, sorry, keep going here. Um, at the beginning, we talked with Minnesota State University Mankato Water Resources Center about helping us. They had recently come out with a state of the river, river report for the Minnesota River. And so one of the things we wanted was something like that for our watershed. Um, and they did come up with one, um, and it was called the Signs of Progress is what we ended up naming it, the State of the Canon and Strait Rivers. And I'll talk more about that in just a minute. Um, but they also did some statistical analysis for us. There's two sites in the Cannon River watershed that had enough both water chemistry and flow data that they could do some statistical work on it. Um, so those two sites are the Cannon River at Welch, which is kind of in the northeast portion of the watershed, fairly close to the Mississippi River and then the Strait River at Faribault. And so using data from the MPCA and USGS, they came up with um, a little bit of trend information. We also looked at the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency's citizen stream and lake data. They had, uh, were just in the process of doing some trend analysis as well. And so that was included in the report. Um, the, that's in Appendix C if you ever want to go back and look at it later on. I'm not going to get into the details of the data right now, but if there's questions later on, we can talk about that. Um, and then the signs of progress. And we really liked this report um, because it was something that was meant for the general public. That When people asked us, so how are things going, um, we could show them this. And the, the process of creating it really helped us to look back and see, yeah, things there have been some improvements. Um, we have a memo from the Department of Natural Resources from 1958 that talked about the Cannon River being uninhabitable for fish down by Faribault because of the um, food processing and the industrial waste down there. And now there's 42 species of fish, I think, in the river that stretch. So that, that was good to know um, and to really highlight that you know, there, there has been progress made. And also to look at more than just water chemistry. So we looked at a little bit at the fish and um, mussels and some of the history. So um, there's, there's just a few um, pictures here of some of the pages from that document. Um, they did a really nice job with the layout, too. And, and we started, as we kept thinking about what we wanted to include, I think our first version, we ended up at 65 pages. And we realized that nobody was going to read that. So we started hacking it down and got to about 25. So there's a lot more that we could have included that we didn't. Um, OK, so then one of the reasons for doing this report was that as we've done a few different TMDL documents and, and implementation plans, we realized we, we keep writing the same things over and over again, like what background about the watershed. and information about some of the pollutants and some of the um, management strategies, you know, the BMPs that, that might be used both on, on um, 
ag land and in urban settings and such. And it seemed like that was sort of a waste of time to keep doing that. So the first few parts of our strategy document here, we, we tried to just write about as much of that as we could um, that we thought would apply for a while. And so the intent is that, that those portions of the document stay more in a static format that other parts will probably change some more. I'll show you the table of contents here in just a minute. You'll see what's going on there. Um, we also then, because the watershed is so large, we decided to break it up into the four what we call lobes of the watershed. Um, and I'll show you those. And, and that really helped us. There's geographic, um, there's differences with land use. There's differences in kind of the communities. And so it made sense to, to break it up this way. Um, and then really the discussion was focusing on what are our priorities. Um, it seems like we haven't done a very good job in the past of prioritizing areas for conservation. And so just bringing that concept forward a lot, I think the locals probably got tired of us talking about it, um, but trying to prioritize that stuff was, was something we really wanted to make sure they heard. Um, we, you know, we then, of course, sent drafts around and got comments. Um, one of the outcomes of the process that I was very happy about is we created uh, what we call the Watershed Library, and that's on our website. And that um, is PDF versions of all these studies that we looked at and documents. I'm sure there's stuff that didn't get included that's out there that we just, for whatever reason, didn't know about. But we got as much as we could, uh, and that's been useful to go and look things up. It's something I had wanted for a long time, and this gave us an opportunity to do it. We also dabbled in some GIS. Um, work to try to understand how we could prioritize better and uh, this um, methodology that we're calling terrain analysis, um, which we realized that we had a person who could do GIS work very well uh, and created some of this, but then we didn't really understand the interpretation as much as some of the soil and water district people might, um, and that there was definite need for some training on that throughout, um, throughout our watershed. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so here's a map that just shows the different lobes of the watershed. So we have the Strait River here, uh, which is really a lot of flat agricultural land, a lot of drainage ditches. Um, in the western portion of the watershed, there's a lot of our lakes. Um, more some some agriculture, obviously too, um, but a little more hilly over there. The middle section is a mix of agriculture in two of our urban areas and a little bit flatter. Um, and then over into the lower portion, uh, it actually gets very hilly again and steep. And so it's smaller farmland, uh, more forested area as well. OK, here's just a few pictures. Um, this is the Strait River, very flat. Uh, Crane Creek is, is uh, a huge drainage ditch, basically. Um, over in the upper canyon, we've got some fishing opportunities and, and lakes and such over there. Uh, here's the middle, the Billsby Reservoir is just at the end of the middle with its lovely green algae. Um, and then this is a picture from Bell Creek in the lower canyon. 